Once again, welcome to Lake uh, Wakatipu in uh, New Zealand, Aotearoa. Um, I'm probably butchering that pronunciation, but you'll have to forgive me, I'm Australian. Um, Dan Jones is my name, welcome to Dan's Boat Life. I'm on the Nimbus 305 Coupe today. Um, this is exciting. Done a lot of Nimbuses now. Um, the only shaft drive Nimbus I've actually driven in the past is a twin shaft. This is a single shaft and um, this is quite a cool boat. Um, the question to me is, can you go skiing and boating in one day? And judging by the surroundings we have here, I'm gonna say the answer is yes. It's an absolute yes. We've got diesel heater, we've got wraparound glass, we've got the option to open and close everything in an instant. And judging by what I've just learnt uh, half an hour ago on another boat, the weather changes here in an instant. And that's why a style of boat like this uh, kind of makes sense in climates like this. Anyway, this is the test drive. Um, if you are interested in a walkthrough, that's a separate video. Um, follow the link either coming up on the screen or I'll pop it down in the description when I've done it. Um, and just to if you're interested, stay th through watching till the end of the video. And I'm actually gonna do some parking demonstrations on this boat and just run through a few different scenarios that I've just learnt um, that from the owner that he'd like to uh, have a little bit of practice on. So I figure some of you guys might be interested in that too. Um, so yeah, that'll be at the end of the video. So what do we have? Um, single shaft V-Drive diesel. We've got a 220 horsepower Volvo. Um, now that 220 is actually being discontinued, so it's gonna be um, replaced by a 270. Um, is gonna be the new uh, Volvo motor coming out with this boat. Single shaft through a V-Drive. So what that means is the engine faces this way. There's a V-Drive gearbox that does that, and then the shaft goes out like that. So the engine faces backwards compared to what you might be used to on a straight shaft drive boat. That allows you to put all this extra accommodation. We've got another cabin downstairs, um, which you wouldn't be able to have if it was a sh straight shaft. Now, uh, being a single engine boat, it is gonna be different in terms of reversing and parking. So you have stern and bow thrusters on this one. My uh, traditional experience with Nimbuses is that these thrusters are, are really well uh, you know, nice and talky, lots of power, and we shall find out. But initially, let's just go through the rev range and just see what we discover. Um, so yeah, currently sitting on, where is my revs on this boat? <sighs> Don't see any revs. Um, so I've got 5.6789, six knots. I'm gonna talk to you about the wash that it makes instead of the revs. Um, I'm currently making nothing offensive to speak of whatsoever. And I'm consuming four liters per hour. Single engine, that's accurate. So at six knots, your consumption is four liters of diesel per hour. So we'll wind that up a little bit. Rolling through six and a half to seven. The wash, that's still not offensive, so that's okay. We're up to 6.6 .6 litres consumption an hour, and I noticed that the boat is still uh, maintaining a level attitude, so we haven't started to dig the stern in at all, or anything noticeable anyway. So that's, uh, get a little bit more revs there. Rolling through seven and a half. I can hear the engine starting to work now. That's eight knots just there. Um, our first wave is starting to break. It's still just acceptable in a no wash zone. And that's giving us a consumption of 10 litres per hour. And that's actually 8.1 knots at that setting. So 10 litres per hour at eight knots. Let's give it a bit more. Now I do have trim tabs on this boat. So I'm just gonna put all the trim tabs up and we'll play with them as we go to see what difference that makes. Rolling through 8.5 and 8.6. Starting to make some wash now, and I can see um, the stern starting to dig in a little bit. Moderate bow raise, but not necessary for me to um, stand up. I do have a flip up bolster here at the seat, and I note that this steering wheel is adjustable as well, so if you need to get comfortable, it could be. Oh, drop my sunny. And it looks like this seat. Uh, will also go forward and back. So if you had longer legs, like I'm 5'7", I feel quite comfortable there 
and uh, got would actually a little bit extra room, but if you were taller blokes or girls, you could adjust that for you. Um, so that's giving us a consumption of 14 litres and definitely making a wash. So that's not acceptable in a no wash zone at nine knots, nine knots. Um, rolling through nine, let's just take the boat where she starts to feel. Let's just stay in this area here because we've got white caps out there. Some weather rolling down the lake. So now she's starting to feel like she's almost on the plane. That's at 12 knots. Just going to give it a little bit more. Okay. So I'm, I'm seeing a consumption of 28 litres an hour there. Um, and we're settling into about 14 knots SOG. 14 knots. And that feels like... This feels like your distance cruise speed setting. So... If you were going somewhere and wanting to be economical and social, um, this feels like it's about that kind of setting. Let's just have a little play with the trim tabs. Okay. give it a little bit more speed. So they are responsive, a little bit slow, these trim tabs compared to some, but I guess, you know, it's not a go fast race boat. So it's a bit of a set and forget kind of style. So it doesn't need to be a, a immediate response, but um, yeah, that's okay. You'll get used to that. That's not really an issue. I can feel the whole form um, really giving me good feedback at the moment. So cutting through any chop, any moderate chop, um, and even being in offshore conditions. Obviously, I'm on a lake, so I can't go offshore today, but um, the feeling that I get on this boat is that the center of gravity is quite low. The boat's very much in the water rather than on the water. So you could put it on a setting about this 14, 15 knot speed setting and go places. Um, I definitely think that's uh, something that the design of this boat lends itself favor favorably towards. Um, yeah, and this is, I mean, God, look how beautiful this is. This is just God's country. I mean, I said this in the other video this morning. Um, it's just amazing. I can see another weather front just hitting us now. Considerable breeze just kicking off the mountain. Here comes a, some blanket rain. Uh, but I'm not worried. You know, I've got a diesel heater on this boat and we've got the ability to close it all up, stay comfortable, or open it up if the weather changes. So that's not bad. I've just got to keep an eye on my sun lounges here because they're catching a little bit of air there. So I hope this is properly secured. I didn't check that myself. Okay, they're all right. Um, so sitting on that 15 knots, I'm gonna, I'm gonna open it up to full speed when I turn downwind. Um, just because I want to make sure I don't lose those sun lounges. I should have checked that myself. <laughs> Naughty Dan. <laughs> Still sitting on that 28 knots. And look, the opening side door here, the opening sunroofs there, and the opening window there, just lends this boat to many different scenarios. Um, as we are experiencing right now, immediate weather changes. And that's where a style of boat like this is going to be great. My, my noise levels are, are really acceptable. I'm just going to close this door. Okay, so that's a noticeable drop in noise just there. And, and from the beginning of the test to now, the lake has chopped up because this weather's just coming through. I'm going into the chop and look, I can hear it, but I can hardly feel it. The boat's really handling this quite well. And Let's give it some wide open throttle now. So I'm going to raise my trim tabs. Rolling through 17 knots, I can see 35 litres consumption. 45 litres. Going downwind. Eight my speeds just hitting 19 knots there. That's the gas alarm. Just ignore that, guys. 
Okay, so I'm getting a top speed of 19 and a half knots there. And I'm just going to trim that out a little bit. There we go. 19 and a half knots. That's about what I would expect with a, a size motor like this. And let's face it, this, this boat's not about racing around the place. You don't drive a boat like this. That's giving me 46 litres per hour total consumption. But you really, if you want to get somewhere fast, you really do it at this sort of speed, just here, which is around about that 15, 15 knots. So I'm full, on 15 and a half there at 30 litres an hour. You know, if you can do 15 nautical miles consuming 30 litres an hour, that's going to get you places and you're clearly doing it in comfort and you're able to tackle these changing weather conditions, which is what these Swedish boats are all about and which is why it's so suitable here in New Zealand. And, you know, I was so excited to be able to test this boat because I know a lot of you guys in Tasmania, in Victoria and in South Australia are going to see something like this and you're going to value it because, let's face it, you have some pretty changeable weather conditions down there too. So, anyway, um, keep watching. I'm going to film a little bit of parking practice on this boat, so stay tuned. Okay guys, so here we are um, on final approach to the marina berth. It's about 30 metres off our bow at the moment. Um, and it's, once again, I will do things like a systems check. So thruster, thruster. I'll, um, so I know that they're operational. The other thing is I'm gonna open my door. We've already hung fenders out on this particular berth. We have a finger on either side. Um, so we've got, uh, got fenders out on all sides, um, two on each side. We have ropes on the dock, and um, I'm just going to do a touch and go for the purpose of the video, but if I wasn't doing that, um, I might uh, have a line tied on the side of the boat um, that I intend on parking or finishing up the manoeuvre. But on final approach, what I'm going to do is actually um, look around me. I'm looking for gusts of wind. I'm looking for something that's going to um, affect my um, approach to this marina berth. That's okay, shallow water. There's always going to be something that distracts you. You know, what was a, the other day? I had some seals like in the water, and um, it's like, all right, I don't want to run over the seals. So, um, what I'm doing now, I know that my prop warp, as we have just discovered, um, pulls to starboard. So I'm, I'm turning the boat around to port. And as I give it, that's going to just help me. So I'm lining the boat up about, about two boat lengths out. And here's where I get my laser focus. I've centered the rudder and I just hang my head out the window and I do a combination of throttle, clicking in and out of gear and thrusting. But notice how my head has not left the, my final destination. So my head is just completely focused. on my final destination. You might even hear me go quiet because I'm a terrible multitasker. Um, but I'm just focused on getting this thing into the dock. So it, the wind was doing its thing. So, but by not moving my head, even though that wind was wanting to push my bow down, I'm able to just focus right where I want to be. And here I am, I've got full control and I can actually just step off now um, if I had a rope in hand and I can um, complete the purpose or complete the maneuver, I should say, myself from midships or walk down to the back of the boat um, and secure the boat in the traditional manner. But that's, that's how by having a laser focus on your final destination, that's how you would reverse a single shaft drive boat like this. And now I'm going to drive, this, drive us out of here um, and successfully land it into the dock. Um, so, so the key, the key points there. Um, 
understand your prop warp and what, what direction it pulls the boat. Um, on final approach, line the boat up to your marina berth that you want to back into with about one or two boat lengths to spare. Um, open the door, hang your head out the window and, and gently engaging reverse gear and back into neutral and then combining it with your thrusters, both bow and stern, with an absolute laser focus on your final destination, like a pilot landing a plane on a runway. With, if you practice that enough times, you're gonna be able to land it in your marina berth perfectly every time. Um, and it just takes a little bit of getting used to. And once you've got that into your muscle memory, um, your days are gonna get better and better and better because you won't be stressing about parking the boat at the end of the day. And why do we go boating? We go boating to have fun and have a good time and be in beautiful locations like this. And if we can, if we can boss that scenario, then you're, you're basically bossing the whole weekend. Anyway, if you wanna see some more interesting content, follow the links popping up on the screen now. My name's Dan Jones, this has been Dan's Boat Life. See you on the next one.